The digital world is a single world. Eventually, we'll speak one language. It's very hard for people to think of that. And eventually, by the way, it might be a thousand years, but it's eventually going to be a single language. And it's not going to be an uninteresting place because there isn't variety. My goodness, there's a lot of variety already. It's not that the variety has to come from the traditions. Variety comes from interests that come from the bottom up. And as we approach that, we're going to see lots more communications. And kids that communicate with other kids already, we find that in remote Cambodia today, and I'm giving a real example from the laptop project, know the names of all of the soccer players in Brazil. Now, why did that happen? It's what they talk about. It's what they communicate with other children. And how do they communicate? They communicate by typing English. Now, if English happens to be your native language, you'll say, well, I'm lucky. It's my native language. But it's also become a global language. And people are fond of saying more people are learning English in China than speak it in the rest of the world. And that, <clears throat> if it's not true, doesn't matter. It's so close to true. It's an interesting way of looking at it. So what I urge you to do, by way of closing, is to think of our movement from atoms to bits, not just that you're in a knowledge economy. That's true, but it's almost incidental. It's a much deeper cultural phenomenon. It's a cultural phenomenon that blurs, as I said before, work and play, home and office, blurs roles. It completely removes, in my opinion, the crisp definitions. One of the things I dislike about school, when I went to it, and when I see people doing it, is that everybody focused on accuracy. And you know, that may in fact not be the important point. That when kids learn things, the accuracy, yes, I want a brain surgeon to be accurate. Yes, I want the pilot landing the plane to be accurate. But accuracy is not a fundamental element of learning learning. And it's not a fundamental element of growing up as a creative society. But the real question is, does a society have to go through all of those steps to then worry about being a creative society? And I would argue, because of the digital world, the answer is no, that you can, in fact, develop economically and be a creative economy without first going through this stage of extraordinary discipline and rote learning to make enough money to then become a creative society. And time will tell if I'm right. Thank you very much. <laughs>